Hi, I'm Deboki and this is Okie Dokie Boki and today I'm going to be doing uh, my first library check-in video of 2022. So the way that I usually do these library check-in videos, I usually will first go through the books that I had talked about last time. So the books that like in the last time I did my library check-in, I, you know, just freshly checked them out from the library. I was thinking about reading them and just kind of going through just what those books were. So today I'm going to go back through those books, see which ones I read, which ones I didn't, how I felt about the ones that I read, and then I'll also go through what that I've checked out since then and you know what what, what my plans are um, with my library reads for the next month. Last time I did my library check-in video was basically the end of 2021 and I was coming off of this year of feeling a little bit like meh about my reading overall like I had read a lot of great books that I really enjoyed it's nothing like that it's just I was kind of like in a, a place where I just felt like I had read a lot of nonfiction and a lot of romance and I kind of wanted to like mix things up a little bit but I didn't quite know what I was in the mood for so I just basically went around the library and checked out a whole hodgepodge of books I had some books that had come in on hold and then others that I was just like we're gonna see like I don't know like I've heard about this book or that cover looks good just like really no strong criteria just going with whatever felt like it might be remotely interesting. And as I said in that video, I knew doing that that I was not going to be reading all of those books. My goal was just to check out a variety and then over the holidays see which ones actually clicked with me and which ones didn't. This is the stack that I had checked out last time um, that I made a library check-in video and this is like my new fresher stack of books. Um, so we're gonna start off with this stack. Um, it's a little bit shorter than all of the, the list of books um, that I had talked about last time because I've actually obviously returned some of those books. So books that I've returned from last time included The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley, which I actually talked about last time because I did read it um, and kind of was like, it was fine. I didn't have super strong feelings about it, but if you want to hear me talk about it, you can you can watch my last library check-in video. I also returned Normal People and Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I didn't get a chance to read them. Um, I didn't read Seeing Ghosts by Kat Chow, which I also returned. Um, as I had said last time, that is a memoir that deals heavily in grief. And I just kind of had a sense, like I had gotten it in on hold, um, just like at a time that ultimately didn't like fit right with what my mood was to like actually read like I didn't really actually feel like reading uh, a memoir about grief during the holidays and it's just unfortunately that's like around when that hold had come in um, so I am planning to return to seeing ghosts at some point because I've been really interested in the memoir um, overall but it's just right now is not gonna be uh, what I read I also returned uh, death on the Nile by Agatha Christie I read this super loved it. I have read a few Agatha Christie books in the past, but like do not have a super strong memory of them besides enjoying them. And Death in the Nile is obviously one of her super well-known books. It's got the movie adaptation coming out. So I was like, you know, when I, like it was on the, on the shelf, I just like went over to where there were a bunch of Agatha Christie books and figured I'll give this one a try. And I'm glad I did. It was very good. It's, you know, a very well-constructed mystery. A lot of the things that happen in it, a lot of the red herrings, a lot of the twists, a lot of just the ways that a lot of things come together that are not necessarily in service of the mystery, but that build all the other characters over the course of the book. A lot of that was really fun. And I didn't know going into it that the way the book is set up is like you first actually see see a lot of the characters in England before you actually head over to the Nile. Um, so that was like a thing that was initially kind of surprising, but that was also really interesting because it was cool to see how these dynamics that we saw in England um, translate over like, you know, as things progress in terms of time and distance. Like we've got everything going on like with this weird initial setup. So you have like some little seeds that are initially getting planted about things that characters might feel about each other, things that they might hate about each other other little mysteries about who characters are, like the way that a lot of that is set up in that early section set in England, and then, and also I think maybe a little bit in America, and then seeing everything actually play out in full, like kind of like masterpiece theater, like murder mystery theater, I guess, um, in, on the Nile and like on the, the boat, like all of that was super cool. So I'm pretty excited. I've, um, as we'll get to in a bit, I've checked out another well-known Agatha Christie uh, novel that has had a recent movie adaptation. Um, so I. I think like Agatha Christie is going to be one of those like authors whose works I slowly you know kind of work through during this year. So from the stack that I have left we've got The Final Girl Support Group, A Discovery of Witches, Arsenic and Adobo, and Milkman. I think of these four books Milkman is the one that I want to prioritize the most just because I've all, like I've talked about before it's a book that I have been reading for so long and I've been really enjoying um, so I just 
I feel like it would be a really nice way to start off my year for me to actually finally finish this book, to just like sit down and enjoy it and enjoy the rest of it and just finish this book. I just really want to finish it. And I feel like the way I'm saying it, it sounds like I'm bitter and resentful against the book. I'm not. I really think this is a great book. I am bitter and resentful against myself for not finishing it. A Discovery of Witches continues to be the one that I feel like the least I don't know, incentive to prioritize, which I feel bad about because I, when I did my library check-in, I, I got quite a few comments from people who were saying that they hope that I read this book. And I do also hope that I read this book one day, but I don't know if right now is the time for me to get to it. There's a chance that I'll give this like a few chapters and actually get fully drawn into it. So if that happens, I will eat my words. I will I will have reprioritized it and I will be grateful to all of the commenters who told me to read it. Um, but for now, this feels a little bit lower priority. And then the Final Girl Support Group and Arsenic Adobo are both kind of tricky for me. I've given them both of them a little bit of a shot. Um, you can see my bookmark here with Arsenic and Adobo and they just haven't grabbed me yet. And that's not a review of the books. Like I don't have firm feelings on what is and isn't working about these books for me. It might just be that I'm not quite in the mood for them um, the way that I I thought I was. Maybe it'll be like a discovery of witches where I'll give them a few more tries and see and maybe I will get a little bit more engrossed. I think with the final girl support group so much of the initial pages are just going to setting up the premise which I feel is like at times feels a little bit forced in a way that it's not quite working for me or I'm just kind of getting a little bit annoyed which might not be fair. I've heard really good things about this book. Like people love this book. So maybe I'll have to get past that and just like stick with it. And with Arsenic and Adobo, like I said, I don't really have a strong reason for why this isn't grabbing me. I think there's just maybe something with the writing that is just like not really the kind of style that I find super engrossing. It just hasn't really grabbed me yet. So I do wanna give it more of a chance just because I like the ideas going into it, but it just hasn't been working for me yet. So next we're gonna go to this stack, the stack of books that I have more recently checked out. Um, and the first is Paladin's Grace by T. Kingfisher. And I have already read this and I have already loved it. This is maybe my first full read for 2022. I'm not sure, that might not be true. I probably read Death on the Nile first. Whatever it is, it is one of my first full romance reads of 2022 and I love it. I am so excited for the rest of this series. I am waiting for the second book to come in on hold because I am just like dying to get into more of the series. This is a historical-ish fantasy romance series. I say historical-ish because it's clearly in a historical setting, but the language is pretty modern. Like people talk about getting laid and stuff. So if that's the kind of thing that annoys you, like just know that going in, like if you want the language to be authentic or something, well, I mean, authentic is unclear when we don't know what the actual authentic setting would be to compare it to, but if it bothers you to have that kind of like super modern language um, that feels anachronistic to the whole setting, like just know that going in. But I loved it because uh, the way that it was all used, super funny. This is like a great book for combining, I think, really good emotional arcs for our characters. The, the premise is that we have this paladin. Um, he's a knight, I guess, I, that's what they are. Um, super chivalrous, was dedicated to a god who died. And then as a result, he and his fellow paladins serving that god have had this issue where sometimes they go a bit berserk. Uh, they, they basically go into a very violent state of mind where they're basically trying to kill everyone. So, you know, not so great because they also don't want to do that. Um, but as a result, they have now gone on to serve other people to basically help protect them. And so Stephen, our paladin, uh, he is just doing his paladin thing, you know, just trying to recover from this devastating loss of his god when he gets drawn into a lot of different things at once. <laughs> there's a lot of different plots going on. Um, there's like a serial killer that like is operating. There is an assassination plot that is unfolding. There's there's a few things that are happening that he gets drawn into along with this perfumer, Grace, who is our other main character. And she has the sort of mysterious past. She's like running away from something that we find out over the course of the books. And so she is incredibly good at what she does, but she also gets drawn into some of these mysteries. She gets drawn into Stephen orbit. There's a little bit of like a lust at first sight with these two, but they're both so awkward because of their respective backgrounds in ways that are just kind of fun to like see how they're both flirting but not flirting in a, uh, in a lot of their interactions um, because they're just kind of like both like, you know, little awkward people um, who need some help to figure out how to romance each other. So like I said, there is a lot going on plot wise with this book. We've got paladins, we've got perfumers, we've got a serial killer like decapitating people, we've got assassinations, we've got spies, 
guys, there is a lot. And the world is super fascinating, but in the beginning of the book, because there are all these different plots getting built up, I had a hard time initially getting invested because I was kind of like, I don't know which of these plots I'm supposed to care about. And I don't know what aspect of them I'm supposed to be caring about because there's so many different elements being built up kind of around each other and not necessarily um, always in the most orderly fashion, which is fine. It just took me a little bit of time to figure out like kind of how to situate myself in all of this shit that's going on. But once I did feel situated, fully super love this book. Um, like I said, I am super excited for the rest of the series. I am waiting for the second book to come on on hold and then we'll immediately probably purchase the third one because I don't think my library even has the third book. I'm gonna have to be like, hey, can you guys get this? I think it just does such a great job with like the adventure, the mystery and the emotional aspects of our main characters. I think it really does a good job of balancing all of that so that it's funny, it's sweet and it's romantic, but also like it has this like real heart even when it's breaking moments with a little bit of irony. Like it has a little bit of self-awareness, but is also willing to indulge in the emotions that are necessary at each moment. So I super recommend this book if you're looking for something that is, I don't know, just like a good, fun, romantic read. Like I said, I am doing more Agatha Christie this year. I'm gonna get some more read. So this is Murder on the Orient Express, which is another really well-known story of hers. So yeah, I don't have much more to say about it. I am excited to read it. I'm excited to see how it compares to Death on the Nile and see kind of, yeah, just like all these different approaches to mystery and setting it up and see, see what she does. The last three books I'm gonna be talking about are nonfiction books and to be completely honest, I am not optimistic about my chances of finishing them because of some really poor planning choices on my part. So right now I'm reading Irresistible Empire for Nonfiction Book Club. That book is giant and it's very dense. It's like one of those books where I feel like it's taking me like an hour to get through like 20 to 30 pages, maybe like 40 if I'm being a little bit more focused. Um, so I am taking it very much like an hour a day at a time kind of right now, because otherwise I think I'm gonna be so miserable the week of nonfiction book club. Like some books we read, we can like really wait for the last minute and like read all of it and like be okay. I don't think that I, with my very limited experience of reading like dense history books can like actually do that with Irresistible Empire. So I, I have to take my time with that book because I am just, I, I do not have the training to be able to work through it any faster. On top of that, uh, next month is when the first round of the BookTube prize starts and I signed up to judge. For the next few months, I've got like potentially quite a bit of my nonfiction reading really, really planned for me. At the same time, I really do wanna read these books. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see if I manage this. The first book is this giant book, Powerhouse, the untold story of Hollywood's creative artists agency. I have heard this book talked about a few times or kind of referenced as a really good uh, resource for anyone who wants to understand more about like the machinations behind Hollywood. And as someone who is deeply fascinated by the machinations behind Hollywood, uh, yeah, like this is like a book that I really wanna read. Um, it looks like it's an oral history told by a lot of people um, who have been involved with the Creative Artists Agency. So I am deeply curious about it. It is also giant, but again, I think that's like a function a little bit of the fact that it is an oral history. It reminds me a little bit of, um, what's the book? I have it right here. Oh, Meet Me in the Bathroom. So on the one hand, it's a giant book, but on the other hand, I think oral histories are sometimes a little bit faster to read because there's not necessarily a lot of analysis that you need to dive through. Um, it's just, you know, people giving their experiences. And so that I have sort of mixed feelings about that. I do like the oral history format because it has that fun kind of gossipy vibe. And especially I think with books about entertainment, it works super well. Like I really like that aspect of Meet Me in the Bathroom. The aspect of Meet Me at the Bathroom that was a little bit harder for me is that it felt like a lot of those anecdotes, a lot of those stories go very, um, um, unanalyzed unless you like happen to have other quotes from people that are in dialogue with those quotes you know incidentally or coincidentally whatever like there were there were things in that book that I felt like just kind of went uncommented upon in a way that was frustrating and so I'm I'm sure that'll be a part of this book as well but I'm also just so curious <laughs> like it's at the end of the day like the limits of the format are just the limits of the format you still have to enjoy what you can get out of it and I feel like a giant potentially gossipy book about you know one of the most powerful <laughs> agencies in Hollywood is like 
still gonna be something kind of fascinating to read. So next is Craft in the Real World, Rethinking Fiction Writing and Workshopping. This is a book that I've seen people reference just like a number of times when they're talking about how like, you know, different factors that go into fiction writing. And so it's something that when I was taking a writing class last year, I think there was like one point where our instructor was citing stuff from it. And so that kind of initially raised my interest in the book. And so I do want to finally get around to reading it. The idea is just basically how do we approach teaching other people like how to write fiction or how do we approach, you know, in the more specifically the workshop structure, um, you know, people giving feedback, people coming in and really offering up their writing in this way. How do we do that in a way that's constructive and like respectful of where a lot of different people are coming from and do it in a way that is not just necessarily adhering to one really strict model of what people think fiction should be. And the last book is The Right to Sex, Feminism in the 21st Century. And this book, I initially was super curious about it because I had heard the author give a number of interviews where she talked about different aspects of the book. It's the same boat like all the other ones though. We're gonna see if it fits in. I, I'm like, hopeful because it's not like for some reason in my head this was going to be a giant 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 book and it's not. It's a pretty <laughs> reasonable size. So I think right now especially like I'm doing that thing where like I'm being super anticipatory about all of this booktube prize reading where like I don't like I don't even know what it's gonna look like it's probably gonna be fine like I can fit all this in I just have to be diligent and like plan ahead and so it's like probably gonna be fine it'll be okay you know um so hopefully we'll we'll get to all of these books next time and I will be able to tell you guys that I was actually not as awful as I told myself I was gonna be between that stack and this stack I'm excited to see what I actually get to in the next month um if you guys have any feelings about any of the books I talked about any books that you think in particular that I should read if you really really think that I need to read A Discovery of Witches immediately and that I am wrong for not having given it a shot yet feel free to let me know uh, down below and thanks you guys for watching bye